Okay, so um, what I want to discuss today is uh, statistical mechanics. So statistical mechanics uh, this deals with the, um, the description of uh, systems of uh, physical systems of many many particles. So in general, these particles are described by a vector of uh, uh, coordinates. And uh, each of these uh, for n particles, and each of these uh, coordinates uh, is formed of two uh, parts the coordinates, uh, the physical spatial coordinates, and the momenta. And uh, the important point is that uh, n is very, very large, it's of the order. Of the Avogadro's number, which is 6, 6 to 23. So we are in a situation where we deal uh, with, a, with a vector of uh, many, many, many uh, variables. Okay? So typically, uh, so uh, generally, this uh, vector here belongs to what is called the phase space. And, um, and essentially the, uh, the, the dynamics, uh, so this, this vector has a dynamics uh, uh, which is given by mechanics, okay? either quantum mechanics or classical mechanics. So for example, in uh, classical mechanics, uh, this vector evolves in uh, phase space. Uh, uh, from certain initial condition uh, following, uh, say, a trajectory which is given by uh, Newton's law or, if you want, uh, Hamilton's equation. So all the information about the trajectory of the dynamics uh, is contained in a function which is called the Hamiltonian. the Hamiltonian and, uh, and um, the laws of motion of uh, the of this uh, system are given by are determined by this Hamiltonian in particular say the uh, uh, Hamilton's equation are that the dynamics uh, of uh, the positions are given by minus the derivative of this uh, energy with respect uh, to the uh, corresponding momentum uh, with a plus, sorry, and uh, the 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 dynamics of the momenta given by minus the derivative of the energy with respect to the corresponding position. Okay, so this, uh, uh, so in principle, this is a complete description of your system. So uh, this gives you uh, a full uh, um, uh, description of what is going on. Okay. However, this description is uh, uh, not very practical because you have to solve these many differential equations. So what is, uh, uh, what is better is to, uh, and, and in the end, what you would like to uh, understand are what are the macroscopic properties of uh, the system uh, you are dealing uh, with. So if you are dealing with a gas, you would like to understand, uh, say, uh, what is the equation of states. So the state, the, the equation that uh, determines uh, the uh, microscopic variables such as uh, temperature, volume, uh, pressure, and, um, and the number of particles. Uh, 
so you see that in order to go from uh, this microscopic description to uh, a macroscopic description, uh, the idea in statistical mechanics is the one of uh, uh, using uh, um, a statistical hypothesis. Okay, so and um, so the, the idea is that uh, what you would like to uh, measure, so the observables. Uh, So the observables are averages uh, over time. Okay, so uh, we would like to uh, when you take a measurement on, on your system, then uh, uh, of a generic uh, observable uh, of that depends on the um, state of the system, or the microscopic state of the system, then uh, uh, you would like, uh, you, you can think that, uh, well, uh, <coughs> you are observing the system, uh, your um, experimental apparatus is uh, probing the system of a sufficiently long time t, and uh, the, the measurement that you take uh, is essentially related to the time average of the value of the observable along uh, the trajectory that uh, uh, your system is following. Okay, so the idea of statistical mechanics is to replace this uh, um, time average with an average, with a probabilistic average, with a statistical average over uh, a density uh, or probability distribution of the observable of x. Okay? So the, the whole point of statistical mechanics is to ask uh, what is this uh, what is this probability distribution? Okay. And uh, so I'm not going to uh, give you a full course in statistical mechanics, but I will just uh, uh, recall or recall what are the steps uh, that allow you to uh, identify this. Uh, this uh, uh, probability distribution. So, but already here you see that uh, you have uh, three levels of description of your system. One is that uh, uh, a very microscopic description in terms of uh, uh, the, the configurations of your system. The other one is uh, a, a statistical description in terms of a probability distribution defined on the coordinates, on the space of coordinates of your variables. And the third one is, uh, uh, is a deterministic, or is, if you want, is the, is the, uh, is the um, thermodynamic description, in the sense the description of the system at the level of macroscopic uh, uh, quantities. And, um, and what you see is that uh, this uh, description is very similar to uh, the three levels of description that uh, we have encountered where we have uh, described uh, sequences of uh, random variables. So you can describe the sequence, uh, uh, a sequence of uh, uh, random variables in the space of sequences. But you can also describe, describe it uh, in, the, uh, in the space of probability distribution. In that case, we had, uh, uh, you remember, we had uh, that um, because of the asymptotic equipartition property, if, uh, if you have a large sequence uh, of random variables, then uh, uh, there is a is a quantity which is the empirical average, which is essentially uh, very close to the original distribution. 
And this, uh, in terms of this, you can get uh, 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 a probabilistic uh, uh, description. But then what we saw is that there are quantities uh, such as averages uh, of uh, um, say xi that essentially behave as uh, deterministic quantities. So essentially, uh, this, this uh, same three level of descriptions are uh, present uh, here, okay? And uh, as we are going to see. Okay, so <coughs> let me give you, uh, by the way, uh, yeah, so in, in, in physics, in statistical physics, uh, we speak about uh, uh, configurations, uh, then uh, when you look at uh, the distributions of the phase space uh, or the distribution also of single particle. Uh, <coughs> Uh, coordinates, you talk about uh, states, a thermodynamic state is a, is, is a, is a, a probability distribution and then uh, uh, these are the thermodynamic uh, uh, variables. Okay, okay so uh, how do you go from uh, classical mechanics uh, to this uh, uh, row of x? Well, uh, uh, the main step uh, is uh, given by uh, what is called the uh, Liouville theorem. And uh, what Liouville theorem tells you is that uh, the, this quantity rho as a function of time is uh, is a constant. So this uh, density is conserved uh, 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 along uh, all trajectories. It means that uh, essentially, if you take uh, uh, a set of uh, different points uh, or different systems uh, that uh, one calls typically ensemble, then uh, uh, the, this uh, volume of uh, systems evolves uh, uh, in, a, in a way such that uh, the, uh, uh, the volume is conserved. And this is uh, the consequence of, uh, uh, of, two, uh, of two facts. One is uh, Hamilton uh, equations, so this is classical mechanics. Uh, and the other one is uh, um, uh, is the continuity. Is the fact that uh, the uh, say this uh, density is, is a probability distribution. So essentially, it satisfies a continuity equation. It means that uh, if you want to understand how uh, the, the density changes in a particular point uh, in time, then uh, uh, this will be equal to the number of points uh, that uh, enters or leaves uh, this uh, particular location in, uh, in the same time interval. Okay? So I'm not going to give you the derivation, but if you combine this uh, with this, then uh, you get this result. Okay, so uh, then uh, this result uh, implies that rho is a constant of the motion. So then uh, rho of x must be a function of the constant of the motion. In particular, it must be a function of, of the energy. Imagine that we take uh, a system uh, which is at rest, uh, so the momentum is zero and uh, uh, also the angular momentum is zero, so uh, the only relevant uh, constant of the motion is, is the energy. So, so the question now becomes, uh, uh, what is this function f? Okay, uh, and um, uh, so uh, now, of course, 
if you have a, a, an isolated system, if your system is isolated, then uh, uh, the energy is just a constant. Let's call it U. Okay? And then uh, your density uh, must be uh, equal to essentially a delta function times uh, a constant, we call it gamma q, times a delta function of. Uh okay, so uh, <coughs> strictly speaking, one has to define this delta function. Uh, as being a uh, uh, delta function of discrete interval, a small interval delta of energies, uh, because otherwise uh, you need to uh, take into account the Jacobian. But uh, okay, let us uh, not uh, uh, worry about this detail, but essentially, this is uh, um, the, the density in, uh, uh, of a system of an isolated system for which the energy is constant and this is called the uh, micro canonical ensemble ok so uh, now an interesting observation of this is that uh, you see this is a, a uniform distribution so this is also a distribution of maximal entropy, okay? So this is, uh, um, um, uh, looks like a coincidence, but uh, it is actually uh, what you get. And um, also, uh, implicit in this derivation, there is one uh, important hypothesis, which is the ergodic uh, hypothesis which is the hypothesis that uh, actually in time uh, so <coughs> if you uh, uh, look all the say if you define all this all the manifold of uh, the uh, of your phase space uh, where uh, the energy is equal to u then what this hypothesis uh, tells you is that uh, no matter where uh, uh, where you start from uh, and no matter what other point uh, you, you pick uh, then uh, at some point uh, your system uh, uh, will uh, pass through any point so the ergodic uh, hypothesis tells you that the system in time will visit uh, uh, uniformly all these manifold of all the configuration which are the same energy E. Now, uh, so for example, the uh, ergodic hypothesis uh, uh, would not be uh, satisfied is, for example, this manifold is composed of uh, disconnected parts. Okay, and uh, so that the system cannot jump from uh, one part uh, to the other. And so the question is, uh, well, does this, uh, uh, does this uh, ergodic hypothesis, uh, uh, is, is this ergodic hypothesis true or not? Well, this is a question mark. Okay, there are some systems, simple systems for which you can uh, prove this ergodic hypothesis some system where you can prove that this ergodic hypothesis is wrong. In particular, uh, it is not true for uh, um, integrable system where essentially uh, you have uh, uh, other constant of the motion so that uh, your, uh, the different uh, uh, parts of this manifold that correspond to different values of the other constant of the motion and, uh, and of course then uh, the system cannot visit uh, all these uh, uh, components, okay? So, okay, but 
if you assume that this uh, ergodic hypothesis works, then uh, you can think uh, that uh, uh, your the distribution of the phase space is uniform over all uh, configuration that have the same energy U. Okay? And then this is the microcanonic ensemble, and you can do your uh, calculations. Okay, so uh, what is the. Um, <coughs> what if uh, now we take uh, um, a different uh, system? which is not isolated, but uh, say, for example, uh, there, is, uh, there is a part, uh, a subsystem, which is, uh, say, we take uh, a big uh, isolated system, and then uh, uh, we consider uh, a, a, a small part of it. So this large system uh, would be an isolated system, but this small system is a system uh, that um, is not isolated because uh, it uh, can exchange energy with the larger system. Okay, so generally you talk about the large system as the heat bath. And, uh, and uh, this, uh, uh, the smaller system is your subsystem. Okay, <coughs> now the, <coughs> the main idea uh, that allows you to derive this, uh, uh, the distribution of the phase space, or this function f, is the following, that uh <coughs> So here I'm uh, following uh, uh, standard textbooks uh, such as uh, uh, the book of Landau on statistical mechanics. So the idea is that uh, imagine that you take uh, two subsystems. So this is uh, coordinates x1 and this is coordinates x2. And these are two subsystems of the same uh, uh, larger system. So so generally, you would have uh, that uh, uh, if you look at the combined uh, distribution, then uh, it is natural to think uh, that uh, these two subsystems, uh, if the interactions are uh, short-ranged, if uh, particles uh, interact with one another only if they are close by, then uh, uh, these two uh, systems here, subsystems here, they will be essentially, the probability distribution will be independent. Uh, so you can write uh, uh, this, uh, um, the combined distribution should be the product uh, of the two distributions, okay? But now, uh, also you have that the energy of the combined system it depends on x1 and uh, x2 will be uh, the sum of the energies of, uh, of the two systems. Well, there, there might be uh, an interaction uh, energy but uh, there are several reasons to believe that uh, this interaction energy uh, can be neglected. Uh, first of all, yes, if you consider two systems that are separated enough, then uh, uh, the interaction energy can be made as small as possible if systems have a local interaction. And second, even if the two systems are really in physical contact, uh, then uh, uh, with short range interaction, the interaction, the energy, uh, interaction energy will be proportional to the surface of uh, uh, the systems, where, whereas, whereas the energies will be proportional to the volume of the system. So also in that case, in the limit when n goes to infinity, and, uh, and which is called the thermodynamic limit, uh, then uh, you can neglect uh, the interaction energy, okay? 
And uh, then, uh, if this is true, then uh, uh, this means uh, that the function of uh, uh, this function of uh, uh, which is the function of e1 plus e2 must be equal to f of e1 times f of e2. Okay, and then uh, the solution of this uh, is that uh, essentially f should be uh, an exponential function of of e. Okay, so in general, this implies that rho of x must be equal to uh, e to the minus theta times e of x divided by normalization uh, constant which is essentially called the, which is called the partition function okay and this uh, uh, is called the uh, canonical ensemble okay uh, here takes the form of a maximum entropy distribution where uh, essentially what you are fixing now is uh, uh, the expected value of so the, the, the parameter beta will be given by the fact that the expected value of the energy is given by uh, is fixed at a certain value u indeed uh, uh, you can uh, uh, this is a system uh, uh, that can exchange energy with uh, its uh, uh, with with its uh, with the heat bath, and so you cannot uh, just uh, describe this energy as uh, uh, so the energy is a is a random variable, it fluctuates, but uh, the expected value is fixed. Okay, and this uh, condition here. Uh, fixes uh, uh, the temperature beta. Okay. Okay. So, uh, by the way, let me make uh, uh, at this point uh, uh, a comment uh, on um, the independence that we have assumed here and on interaction. So. Essentially, this means that uh, uh, we are dealing uh, with this uh, vector of coordinates uh, as uh, coordinates of uh, independent uh, and identically distributed uh, independent random variables. And uh, strictly speaking, uh, uh, these are not uh, uh, independent uh, random variables because the particles interact with one another. Okay, however, uh, and this interaction is, uh, is very important because uh, if they were not, if particles were not interacting, uh, then uh, uh, they, they could not exchange energy with one another. And, um, and so the, the system. Uh, so a, a, a statistical description could not be possible because it is the fact uh, is the is the is the fact that say for example in a particle uh, a part, uh, in a gas uh, particles uh, collide with each other and in this collision they exchange momentum and, uh, and energy. It is this fact. Uh, that uh, allows uh, for uh, a statistical description that uh, in the end uh, you can think of uh, the coordinates of the variables of the particles as, as random variables but this also means uh, that uh, the, uh, this vector of coordinates is not strictly independent it is not strictly a vector of independent variables Yet, 
the interaction is weak because uh, um, uh, typically uh, in physics uh, particles interact with a, a short range potential. So um, in a gas of uh, 10 to the 23 uh, particles, uh, each particle interacts uh, at a particular time with only a finite number, a few particles. Okay? So the, the interaction energy is uh, non negligible only for uh, a finite number of particles. So, 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 so this means that you can think of this, uh, run, this vector of uh, um, coordinates uh, as a vector of weakly, independ weakly, uh, weakly dependent random variables. So they are not independent, but they are very close to being independent. And, um, and indeed, uh, this is what makes, uh, 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 allows us to, um, uh, allows for, uh, say, um, microscopic uh, um, um, variables to take, uh, uh, to obey the law of large numbers. So, so if you take, uh, 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 something like, uh, say, for example, the energy density or the energy per particle. This is very similar to a, 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 a mean. So the energy per particle, which will be something like this. This is very similar uh, to a, an average uh, of. Uh, of a sequence of many uh, weakly dependent random variables, and this, so this you can think uh, satisfies uh, 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 low large numbers, and so you can think that this converges to a finite value, uh, which is uh, uh, independent, uh, which is essentially uh, given by u divided by n, uh, which is essentially equal to the expected value of u divided by n. Okay, so uh, this is important because it tells you that uh, in spite of the fact that you have a statistical description, then uh, you can uh, so you can derive from it uh, a, a the description of uh, um, a uh, the thermodynamic description because uh, uh, your random variables, your coordinates are weakly independent and so the low to large, large numbers tells you that uh, uh, say the averages will converge to fixed values. Okay. Now, as we said, uh, both uh, the microcanonical ensemble and the canonical ensemble, there are a maximum entropy uh, distribution. So why is this so? Well, uh, uh, so this, this means that this is a distribution such that the entropy is uh, maximum. And uh, actually this was uh, um, the fact that uh, uh, um, the entropy is uh, maximized was uh, essentially shown by uh, Boltzmann uh, when he studied the kinetic theory of gases and he derived uh, what is called the Boltzmann equation I'm not going to derive this equation, but this is just uh, uh, an equation that tells you the study what is the evolution of uh, the probability density of uh, a, a single particle, uh, a, a sing the, the coordinates of a single particle, and um, if you 
use uh, the laws of classical mechanics, which I just uh, uh, removed, then uh, you can derive an equation. Now, uh, what you see in this equation is that uh, uh, if you want to study the probability of uh, uh, a particle having a certain uh, position and uh, velocity at a certain time, then uh, of course this changes because the particles move. Huh? Uh, but uh, um, uh, but this also changes uh, because particles collide, okay? Because of uh, events like this one. So if you write down this equation here, then uh, uh, there will be uh, a term here that contains uh, the probability that uh, you have two particles, the, uh, the joint probability of, uh, of the coordinates of two particles, okay? And this term uh, here, the term uh, that contains uh, uh, this thing is, uh, is a functional of this thing, it's called the uh, collision integral, okay? Now, uh, so this means that uh, if you want to solve this equation, you should have an equation for the joint uh, distribution of two particles. If you write down uh, an equation for the joint distribution of two particles, this will depend on uh, joint distribution of three particles, four particles, etc., etc. You get a whole hierarchy of equations uh, of uh, this, uh, this type. And so there is not much uh, uh, that you can do. Okay, however, uh, what Boltzmann uh, uh, did was uh, to uh, introduce what is called uh, the molecular chaos hypothesis. So, molecular causal hypothesis uh, tells you that uh, when uh, two particles uh, collide, uh, and uh, they exchange uh, uh, um, energy and, and momenta, you can essentially, so you are all interested in this uh, uh, joint probability distribution, at the time when uh, this, the particles collide, okay? And uh, when these particles collide, essentially what uh, uh, Boltzmann said is that, well, you can consider that uh, the position and velocity of the particles uh, uh, before the collision, uh, this joint distribution, is essentially uh, can be factorized. So that you can consider these two variables as independent. Okay, and uh, so strictly speaking, uh, uh, these two particles, uh, the, the velocities of these two particles are not independent because essentially if you go back in time, the same two particles have been uh, interacting uh, other times, but uh, in between uh, uh, two collisions between the two same particles, each of the two particles has collided, has interacted with many, many other particles, so that essentially the memory of the previous collisions with the same particle has been lost, okay? So this is what uh, uh, motivates uh, this uh, uh, molecular ca chaos hypothesis. And what you see is that the, the, um, uh, when you uh, put these answers into the collision integral, then you can close the equation for the distribution of uh, 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 the coordinates of a single particle. And, uh, and as, a, as a result of this, uh, if you do some further uh, analysis of this equation, then what you find is that uh, the, there is a Lyapunov function, there is a function that always decreases, 
And this essentially tells you that the entropy of uh, 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 and this diagonal function is minus the entropy. So on any trajectory, if you if you compute the entropy, which is uh, uh, the entropy of p, which is uh, the usual uh, uh, p x p log p x t, then uh, uh, what you can find is that uh, the entropy uh, always increases. Okay. So uh, essentially, this gives you uh, an idea of why uh, you find uh, in statistical mechanics uh, maximum entropy uh, distributions. Okay. However, uh, well, uh, uh, this result is somewhat uh, puzzling. Because uh, if you think about, uh, um, so all we used here are essentially classical mechanics, uh, uh, which is uh, Hamilton's equations, and uh, this uh, molecular chaos hypothesis. And uh, now classical mechanics is reversible. So if you uh, uh, if you revert time, if you send t to minus t, then the dynamics uh, um, is is exactly the same. So so this uh, uh, this uh, result here instead tells you that the evolution of your system is irreversible. So this is not consistent with the classical mechanics. Okay, and so irreversibility essentially comes from uh, this uh, statistical hypothesis, which is the uh, molecular chaos hypothesis. Okay, so uh, there is a lot of uh, discussion undergoing, uh, these are very deep uh, uh, questions, but um, essentially what I want to uh, what I wanted to uh, tell you is uh, um, is that essentially um, in the standard derivation of statistical mechanics uh, um, uh, you want to derive uh, the statistical distribu distribution of uh, 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 physical system entirely from uh, uh, the laws of motion of uh, mechanics. And what you see is that essentially uh, this is not possible. You need a statistical hypothesis such as this one or the ergodic hypothesis. And, uh, and these uh, hypotheses actually are uh, really um, uh, say very um, say relevant in the sense that uh, they um, they have a big effect on, uh, on the derivation because they for example bring out uh, irreversibility and at the end of all this uh, you end up uh, with uh, uh, distributions which are distributions of uh, maximal entropy okay so uh, there is another uh, possible distribution, uh, there is another possible description of statistical mechanics uh, which has been advocated by uh, James, where you say, well, okay, so I have a very complicated system with uh, many, many uh, random variables, with many, many variables, and uh, the dynamics, the evolution of this system is uh, uh, given by this function, which is the energy, which is the Hamiltonian. This contains all the information possible, all the possible information that you need uh, to um, uh, uh, to determine uh, the future state.
case of your system and to compute any observable. But uh, now imagine that I don't have uh, information about the configuration, so I don't have uh, uh, I, I don't have a description of uh, uh, I don't know what what are the coordinates of my system, so I want a statistical description. And so the statistical description that uh, um, uh, takes into account only information about the energy is just the maximum entropy, uh, just maximum entropy distribution, where either the energy is fixed and then you get the canonical ensemble, or uh, the energy is fixed uh, on average and then you get the, the canonical ensemble. Okay? So uh, this is uh, um, so in this uh, definition of statistical mechanics, you don't need to worry about uh, uh, the ergodic hypothesis, the mo molecular chaos hypothesis, in the sense that uh, uh, well, the fact that uh, they um, that uh, they are reasonable and that they make sense gives uh, support to the fact that uh, uh, really the energy is really all you care about. Uh, I mean, all, all uh, the, the function that contains all the information about your system and then the maximum entropy distribution are, um, are uh, uh, the correct description, statistical description of your system, but uh, they are not needed. Okay. 